Hi, hey, it's Sexy J. Welcome back to Quick and Dirty. So today's question type, another new digital CT, new type of question, okay? But the background ideas are pretty similar to all my other videos, so watch those, obviously. This is another one of those purpose questions, but how is it different? Let's look at the specific differences, okay? So there are a bunch of these. I'm going to highlight a bunch of these, okay? Let me not write on that right now. Yeah, so if you look at number eight, oh, this is the thing, guys. Do not read the text before you do the questions on any of the readings, okay? I want you guys to identify what is it asking for and use a strategy. So look here. Which choice best describes the function of the underlying sentence in the text as a whole? That's a new one because they're asking for not the function or purpose of the entire passage, but the function or purpose of just this one sentence. Yeah. So that was much more of an AP lit or SAT lit back in the day question and or even AP lang. They've incorporated it into the SAT now. So it is the purpose of a sentence. That's the exact name. Sentence purpose question. So you can see here in number eight, we have that. Yeah. And in number nine, we also have that, right? And in number 10, uh, we skipped that actually. And number 11, we've already covered this in my previous video, so this should look familiar, right? So this is uh, what we've already done. This was purpose of the text. So that is not what we're doing. We're doing purpose of the sentence. Okay, so you see question number eight, we're gonna skip that for today. Why? Because for a little bit of suspense, we'll do it uh, next time because this is much more literary and there are separate strategy for something this advanced. So we'll do the simple research science purpose question. Okay, so I'm getting very specific in these. This is why I want you guys to read the question, what it's asking for first before looking at the text because you, you need to change up your strategy according to the question type. So here, I need to find out the function of that underlying sentence. Okay, so that means even though they're not asking for what text this is, I need to identify what text. And the categories they fall into are the same as what we had on the current SAT and the ACT. So I have current social, I have the humanities passage, I have the literary narrative, I have the research passage or the science passage. Spoiler, this is one of those. Okay, let's look at it here. Psychologist Anand Patabiraman proposes that nighttime work hours can lead to overly pessimistic behavior. Okay. So from here, I know that this is science. Okay. And in science, what do I almost always have? Again, I'm giving you guys the patterns that are super common. In science, I'm saying, I think this is the case. What do you call that in uh, science class? Hypothesis, right? So he proposes that. I don't care what he proposes, actually. And then what is this sentence that's underlined? Gathering data from wherever he analyzed whatever. I don't really care. Okay. So in these underlined um, portion, what does that show? This is the research he did. Okay. And this order, I want you guys to memorize it actually. So this is the purpose of a science. Okay. So I have my proposal. I have my idea. What do I do next? Do I just sit there and think about it internally? No, that's not science. That's like ancient philosophy. I actually get data. So I have my idea. I get my data. This is, I got data. And how do I also know that? Well, I have numbers here, right? And also the results. So again, I don't care about the details. You do not need to read this at all. As I said, it pains me to cross all of this out because I made it, but you don't need it, okay? So in my own head, like I said in my last video, guys, or every video, paraphrase, paraphrase. So what do you have to do? What is the purpose of the sentence? He's saying he did research. That's it. He's saying he did research. This is the research. I have that in my head. He did research. And let's look at the answer choices. And notice that none of these answer choices are the good answer I just said. Are you shocked by that? Hopefully not, because this is a pretty common trick, right? The best answer will oftentimes be missing on the SAT because the best answer will be obvious, okay? Then what is a good answer for the SAT? Remember, uh, extreme answer choices are bad. Remember that video, guys? The nothing answer is the best answer, okay? So answer here is D, I'll cut to the chase. The offer insight into the methodology undertaken during the study. This phrasing, I love this phrasing. Actually, I would hate it if you guys uh, use it in English class, but for SAT, I love it. So offer insight. That just means tell us stuff, right? Every single thing is giving us information. Offer insight, give us information, um, reveal something. All of those are great, okay? Into the methodology undertaken during the study. What does that mean? Stuff he did, okay? I always want to translate this to regular English, okay? So was this stuff he did? Yeah, he, he did stuff. You see how stupid that almost sounds? How simple that is? That's why it's the answer. It can't be wrong. So is it about stuff he did? It is, okay? It is not, eh? Motivations, I don't know why they did the team's motivation. They always give you multiple ways where you can get rid of it, right? So you may say, oh, but I kind of feel like I know why Anand Patamiram did, uh, did the research. What about his team? Did you interview every member of the team? How do you know? You don't, okay? 
And then B, it's not an anecdote. You guys know what an anecdote is? And you can Google it, but I can tell you. Anecdote is like a personal story. This happened to my Uncle Fred. Yeah. Okay. And then C, obstacle. There was nothing in here that had any synonym with difficulty. So the answer here is D. Okay. So it got a little bit long winded, but it's a quick and dirty. So I'll try to wrap it up. And all the things I'm giving you guys, you guys don't need to think of every single one of these when you do the test. I, I think I tell you this a lot, right? If even one of these things pops up into your head while you're taking the test and you go like, oh yeah, Sexy J told me to do this and you get it right, my job is done, yeah? So any of those things is fine and I'll sum it up for you guys right now. Number one, focus not on the text but actual question itself. So from there, I have noticed that this is the function of the sentence. Then I recognize what type of passage is it afterward. It's a science passage. And then looking at the underline, it, oh, it's a research he did, he's a stuff he did. So I'm looking for stuff he did, research he did, and it's disguised, paraphrased in this stupidly awkward, unnatural wording that SAT loves, offer insight into methodology undertaken during the study. So that's my answer. And all of the other ones, they give you an excuse for you to eliminate it. And that's how you get to it. That is overall kind of summation how you do the reading passage overall, right? So this is the function of the underlined sentence. These are about, I would say, two to three questions per section. And they do occur like in like this order, like number nine, number 10, around there, okay? So don't get too caught up, guys, reading the whole thing. Notice again, I did not care about the numbers here. I don't care that if we worked after 8 p.m. or 9 p.m., whatever, ignore all of those, just focus on getting the details, okay? So the other type of harder um, purpose of a sentence question I'll tackle in the next video. So um, stay tuned for that if you wanna know how to do the actual hard stuff. This is also, well, it's easy now, right? I'll see you guys next time. Study every day with Sexy J. Bye-bye.